thinking about electrical circuits, it's sometimes helpful to visualize water being pumped through a pipe because in so many ways the properties of electricity are analogous to the properties of water. As water throws through a pipe, you have a pump. That's similar to a battery. It, the water flows through a pipe just like electricity flows through wires. You also have some task or some objective the water is trying to accomplish, like moving a water wheel or filling a cup. In an electrical circuit, that job is often something as simple as lighting a light bulb. When discussing electrical circuits, we'll talk a lot about resistors. The best example of a resistor is a light bulb. The filament inside a light bulb resists electron flow, or it slows down the flow of electricity. When you slow something down, you're essentially using friction, in the same way that brakes on a car apply friction to slow a car down. As the resistor in a light bulb slows down electricity, it creates friction, a lot of friction, and that friction produces heat. Some of the electricity absorbed by friction leaves the light bulb as visible light, but a good portion of it just translates directly into heat, and that's why light bulbs are often so hot. When you have multiple resistors or multiple light bulbs attached to a wire, there are generally two kinds of circuits that produces. If all of the resistors or all of the light bulbs are connected to just one piece of wire, we call that a series circuit. If the wire has intersections where new wires are attached, creating a bunch of parallel lines with resistors, we say those resistors are in parallel. Your first job when you look at a circuit is to find the total resistance for all of the resistors combined. To find the total resistance in a series circuit, you simply add up the resistance you get from each light bulb or resistor. In a parallel circuit, however, to find the total resistance, you add up the individual resistance as denominators of a fraction. So 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over the resistance from light bulb 1 plus 1 over the resistance of light bulb 2 and so on and so forth. When you're looking at the relationship between voltage and current and resistance, both the individual resistors and the entire circuit as a whole will follow what's called Ohm's law, which is the voltage is equal to the current, which we describe with the letter I, the current times resistance. When you're looking at the entire circuit, the current in a series circuit does not change. The voltage, however, will be different as you move from resistor to resistor. In a parallel circuit, it's the exact opposite. In a parallel circuit, in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same throughout the circuit, but the current changes as the charge moves through the resistor. Let's see how all of that could be applied to a circuit problem. The first thing we notice in this problem is that our circuits are all attached to the same wire, meaning it's a series circuit. So to find the total resistance for the circuit, we're simply going to add up all of the resistance. So the total resistance in this series would be 1 ohms plus 3 ohms plus 2 ohms, or 6 ohms. Next we used Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance. We know the total voltage, that's 12. So 12 is equal to a current that we don't know times a total resistance of 6 or the current is equal to 2, or 2 amps. So the resistance of 6 ohms and the current of 2 amps, that applies to the circuit as a whole. Once we've identified the current as 2, we can start to figure out what's called the voltage drop at each resistor. Again, we're going to use our equation that voltage is equal to current times resistance. And from our last calculation, we found the current to be equal to 2. And remember that in a series circuit, the current stays the same throughout the circuit. So let's apply Ohm's law to this 2 ohms resistor. The voltage drop through that resistor is something we don't know yet. But we do know the current is 2 and the resistance is 2 ohms. So the voltage drop at that point is 4. On the 3 ohms resistor, same approach. Voltage is equal to current times resistance or the voltage drop is equal to a current of 2 times a resistance of 3, or 6 volts. And on the final resistor, the voltage is equal to the current times resistance, so giving us a voltage drop of 2. So here's how it's going to work. Voltage is a measurement of pressure. And as the pressure of electricity goes through each resistor, some of that energy gets absorbed, and the pressure is decreased. 
our initial voltage or our initial pressure is 12. And it's going to remain 12 until it hits the first resistor. Then our voltage drop we discovered was 4. That means after the electricity passes through that resistor, the pressure in the line is only 8. Then as the electricity passes through the next resistor, we lose even more voltage. This time we lost a voltage of 6. So our new voltage is 2. And then on the final resistor, we lose the remaining 2 volts we had, giving us a final voltage of 0. Notice how on the positive side of the battery, our voltage is at a maximum. And the voltage slowly drops until on the line connecting to the negative side of the battery, our voltage is 0. That will always be the case. In other words, the voltage drop between all the resistors in the circuit will eventually consume the entire voltage in the circuit. This circuit is a bit more challenging because part of our circuit has resistors that are in parallel. So our first step is to focus in on the parallel resistors and find their combined resistance. Remember the formula for total resistance for resistors in parallel is 1 over the total is equal to 1 over the resistance in resistor 1 plus 1 over the resistance in resistor 2. So in this case, 1 over our total is going to be equal to 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50. So 1 over our total is equal to 1 over 100 plus 2 over 100. Or 1 over our total is equal to 3 over 100. When we cross multiply, we get 3T is equal to 100, or the total resistance is roughly equal to 33 ohms. From this point on, we'll treat our parallel resistors as one combined 33 ohm resistor. So we could draw a new resistor like this with our original 80 ohms resistor on top and our new 33 ohms resistor on the side. And now, since those two resistors are in series, we simply add them up to get a total combined resistance of 113 ohms for the circuit. We're not given the voltage from the battery. But if we were, we would simply use the equation V is equal to current times resistance first throughout the entire circuit and then again at every additional resistor to find the change in current and the change in voltage. Remember though, when you're applying V is equal to current times resistance to the individual resistors, if the resistor is in series, the current stays constant. However, on the parallel resistors, the voltage stays constant and the current will change. This question is an excellent example of how current behaves differently in parallel and series resistors. Initially we have a current of 4 amps, but then there's a fork or a split in the wires creating a set of parallel resistors. If you could imagine the current in a resistor to be just like the current in a river, if a river is flowing and then that river forks and goes in two directions, you could imagine that in my drawing here, half the current would go up and half the current would bend towards the right. And that's what's going to happen in this circuit. We start off with 4 amps and that current gets split. 2 goes to the right and 2 goes up. Now when we hit circuits A and B, those circuits are in series. And remember that as current flows through series resistors, that current does not change. So the current remains 2 amps as it flows through those resistors. And the same thing happens with resistor C and D. The current stays 2 amps. Then over here on the right, the current merges. We get two coming down from the top and two coming from the right. And just like two rivers merging, the two rivers merge to form a much larger river with twice as much current. So the combined current going through E is going to be four amps. And since F is in series with E, the current won't change or it stays at four amps.